Okay, uh, folks, we're going live. Uh, tonight we're examining La Rasa. La Rasa is a brand from Bira Moretti, and Bira Moretti, I think it's been since oh, 2009 or something. I can't remember. It's not important. They have been, they're part of what's called Heineken Italia, or Heineken Italy. Uh, Bira Moretti, the original, which is just the regular lager, was introduced in 1859. What do you know about that? Yeah, but well, a little bit. It was in, introduced by Luigi Moretti in a town called, well, at the time the town was known as Viden, Viden, and but the Italians called it Undina. The German Austrians called it Viden. But uh, so it was in the Austrian Empire, and that's why this guy David Garlapede, who might join us one day, David said, "Well, why is it a German beer and it's coming from Italy?" I said, "Well, because they were so, probably so influenced by uh, Austria, right?" Right. So, uh, but then uh, seven years, seven years after the beer was founded, there was a war. There was a war between Italy and Austria, and Italy captured that territory, and they've had it ever since. So there's your history lesson. Now, we're joined tonight from the Northeast by Eric and uh, and uh, Ryan. Ryan, I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Eric and Ryan, who just got back from China. We ought to be looking at Qingdao tonight. In fact, Woo, yeah. You guys did that, right? Right before I went back. Yep. We did. And we've got also from the north east Maria. Hello. Evan, the girl next door, Ut Utopia Jane. And we've got from the north central part of the country, John Sharon from the old Northwest Territory, one of those states, Indiana. And he's wow. on. And then out west, we have Tanya with her own beer review channel from California, more than California. Hi. Hello, Tanya. And me, Louisiana Beer Reviews from the Gulf Coast. All right. And Maria, look, I've got the Singa glass. Remember that great video we did on Singa beer? I really enjoyed that, yeah. I should, I should get that again because I don't think I ever did. I know. I think it's one of the best videos we ever made. It was so interesting. Now, the Bira Moretti La Rasa comes in a 330 milliliter bottle. If you go to Italy, it probably comes in cans, big tall, big tall bottles. It's on draft. Uh, it's a Doppelbach, meaning it's a double strong, because Bach is a goat beer, and it's a double goat beer. Uh, they got a man on there drinking the beer. He was a guy that was sitting in the town of Undina in 1942, and the brewmaster said... Um, you look like the perfect guy we would like to have on our label. Could I pay you to like have somebody draw you drinking that beer with that suit that you're wearing? He said, the only thing you have to pay me is just give me beer to drink. All right. And so he's like, I can make that happen. And so that guy on the label is a real guy. Good now, promotion. Now, now, can I chime in here just a minute, Jay, if you don't care? I don't care. I just checked my... Checked it in on a tap because I've never had it here. But I noticed on a tap there's a, and I didn't see Eric check his in, but I don't know if Eric knows this or not, but I noticed there's like two different labels of this beer. Yeah, there's a new label that was introduced for the Italian market, and it might be coming to our shores. But I it's, don't know. It's already in our shores because I've seen a lot of people check it in in the United States, the new white label. Okay, so there's a new, more up to date label. I like the present label, but. The new one looks fine. Um, this beer is not adjunct. I think that the regular beer of Moretti is made with an adjunct. Uh, they talk about it on the website why they use the adjunct. But this one is all barley malt. And, the, and I got the website here. It says, uh, hold on. It says, uh, you should serve it around 50 degrees. It's malted with spicy overtones. Uh, it says... Yeah, I see that new label, Malto Brunito. Uh, it's 
sets, they use a full caramelized malt, or that's the flavor. And they say it's a the type of malt they use is a special malt which is dried and then roasted. And the hops is a they say a particularly aromatic variety, but they don't say what type. And it says the brewmaster suggests drinking this beer around 50 degrees in our temperature Fahrenheit. They said it would pair well with uh, fish starters, both warm and smoked, pasta dishes featuring crustaceans, cheeses or tomato-based sauces, main courses of fish with tomato-based sauces, tomato-based sauces, red meat, and simple desserts. It's won many awards. There's just, I'm not going to even attempt to read all these awards. Yeah, there's a few, yep. Okay, let me tell John Walker. He's trying to send me a message. I'm going to say, okay. Uh, he always. Has he got the beer? He's talking to me about uh, Henry Weinhardt. He says it's not really popular here. Uh, no, it's not popular here either. Okay. Weinhardt's beer. They tried selling that around here, but it didn't do well. Not to mention they've never promoted it. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've never had this beer before. Until the first bottle I had last night, never had it. I've never had it. I got two bottles. This is the first time ever trying this one. I've had the regular one, but I've never had this one. So, right, Ryan? No, nope, never. Um, my mom just had a sip like when we got started, and Eric knows she doesn't... She's not a beer drinker at all. She doesn't. She doesn't like bitter flavors except for coffee. I, I don't know. I can't explain. She just doesn't like beer, and she said it was really good. Yeah. You know, said it's pretty good. Tanya, you've had it. I have not. I bought this six pack last week, and I was really, really good, and didn't drink any of them. Wow, Maria. Yes, I've had it before. Okay. All right. So let's crack it open. You know, there's more than just these two. These are the two we get. If you look on the website, there's probably ten different ones they have. In Italy. Yeah, it's a bigger brand. Yeah, you're right. It's a bigger brand in Italy and in Europe than it ever was in the United States. Right. Over there, there's a huge lineup. It's kind of like Heineken. Yeah. What they have of Heineken in Europe is... Enormous. But what we get is just like little crumbs. <laughs> same with gross. Mm -hmm. yeah. Same with gross. Same with Amstel. It's unfair because I think Americans would buy all this stuff. Okay. Ooh. ooh. Yeah, mine had a tremendous head on. It's still got some good. Uh... Look at this. Yeah. Uh, okay, ladies first. So. Uh, Maria and then Tanya, because Maria, I don't okay. know why I'm saying that, because I'm just looking at whoever I looked at first. Okay, literally. Okay. Okay. It's it's beautiful. It, just the color, just the appearance. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Um, it's burnt orange. It's very clear. It's got a creamy head of tan foam. Um, it's sultry. I mean, it's got a perfect appearance. The light... It captures the light just perfectly. It glows so sweetly. Um, it, there's not a flaw in the appearance at all. And I have no idea how old my bottle is. I I was looking at the back of it, and it's got some kind of code, so I, I have no idea. But it poured just lovely, just pristine. Beautiful pour for the style. Now, my code says 5 and then 208, so that's making me think, it's the 208th day of 2015. Could that be correct? Yeah. Yeah, because mine says 5209. So it's just one day's difference. Mine says 5316. Oh, you got a pretty fresh one. That's mine what I'm saying. Says, mine says 4205. 40. So yours is from 2014. Uh-oh. Um. But a beer like the this... the oldest one so far. The rest of us are in the same ballpark. I mean, it's 7.2%. I don't think it... I think it should probably age all right. I don't see why not. I'm going to tell you what. If, if this is aged good, it's aged perfect because this is awesome. Oh, great. Good uh -huh. 
Now, uh, so Maria's saying it looks great. Now, Tanya, what do you think about this doppel box? Um, this is a beautiful color. Um, the light is not in your favor necessarily, but um, you all have the glass, so you can see it. It's just this beautiful ruby red, um, slightly brown ruby red color poured with a nice head. Mine's dissipated because I was getting antsy and I wanted to drink it, so I poured it. Um, uh, but beautiful, and it, it smells good, but we'll get to that in a minute. Okay. Um, I'll just give a brief description. Same thing, beautiful beige head. It's 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 very there's a lot of light on this coming right now, so it looks more white from what you yep. can see, but I'm looking at it from behind and I can see it's beige. Uh it's ruby, red or amber, amber red. It's clear, but it's uh you know it's funny because I know so many beer drinkers that if I showed them this beer they would not drink it because they would say, it's gonna be nasty, it's too dark. You know, it, they're, they're not even gonna try it. Okay, uh John and then uh, Eric and Ryan. You know, I, I pretty much got to agree with what everybody said. You know, I mean, it's ruby red. I mean, mine had a great big, you know, off-color head on it and, and kind of went down a little bit. But the lacing on this beer and the carbonation on this beer, you see, is just phenomenal. And, it's, and uh, then we'll move on from there. Yeah. I can't disagree with that statement one bit. It's definitely... A ruby red, dark mahogany kind of, uh, I don't know if it's like burnt sienna, but something that dark mahogany, sort of a rusty copper, orangey kind of a color. If you if not looked in the light, it just looks straight up dark red, but there's definitely ruby red tinges everywhere in this beer. And again, if I hold it up to the light, I do see a moderate amount of carbonation. I'm not, I wouldn't say it's like... Um, a champagne -y kind of a carbonation or a bottle condition, you know, cork and cage kind of a beer's carbonation, but definitely has a nice carbonation. And at the top of the beer glass was where the head subsided or where the head started, but now it's subsided a little bit, and there is a little trace amount of the um, the lacing here and there, and it looks like it's clinging and falling ever so slightly, but it looks nice and definitely looks like a Doppelbach style entirely. Uh, yeah, I agree uh, with everything everyone said. I'm not much of a beer uh, connoisseur or aficionado. Uh, I'm glad that I didn't know that we had beers um, like this. That were, uh, from Italy? Yeah, right? this is from Italy, yep. Uh, that just sold locally. Um, so I'm excited, right? I'm excited. I don't cool. know what else to say. Right. That's cool because that, that's what the whole purpose of this is, to be excited and happy and have a good time and, and really study yeah. the beer. Um, exactly. Now the aroma. So we'll just go back in the same order because I just picked people at random. So let's just go in the same order to make things go smooth, I guess you'd say. So there we go. It's aroma time. Okay. So that would be back to me. Yes. Um, I think it smells delightful. It has a breadiness, right? It has a richness, and the richness that you're smelling on the nose that, that um, the first word that comes to your head is malty. The other word that you could put there is it's called melanoidin, and what has happened is, um, you know, it, the malt has had a what you call a male yard reaction or whatever that is, and it's become very rich. Um, and the scent is just so is just so lovely and it's one of the lighter ones right like it's not terribly complex I'm not smelling cocoa or anything you know burnt nothing roasty just like a nice toastiness that richness that breadiness a little bit of caramel and then just this this soft dark fruit to just to just be the background just lovely Okay, now Tanya, I'm interested, when we get to the taste, I'm interested, especially because Tanya says she doesn't like lagers too much, so I'd be curious to, to see what she thinks about this lager beer, you know? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, so when I was smelling it, I agreed with everything um, that Maria had to say, and it has this, this wonderful caramel kind of aroma to it, and then right in the background, it has that, that classic um, <coughs> lager aroma. Um, 
but just like a little hint. Um, and it, it, it makes me really want to drink this beer. Um, and it's got, that like, like you had said, Maria, that nice breadiness. Um, and it's almost like this flavor is dense, you know, and you can, like, smell it in and um, breathe it in and, um, and feel it. It's very interesting. I'm, I'm really, now I'm going to start drooling because I'm, I'm ready to drink this beer. Okay, we'll talk fast. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm picking up a lot of complexity here. We can't go too deep into it because just con of, with time restraints, but um, it's got strong, sweet, bready, bread crust, brown bread malt to me. And the crust of a brown bread more so than the middle of it. Um, there's, um, I don't know what kind of fruit, but it's like, uh, is it dates or is it? Is raisins it, maybe, cherries, plums, something yeah, like that? Raisin, right, 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 raisins, raisins, raisins. Or, or prunes. Yeah. Drink your prunes. Darker fruits for sure. Yeah. I think it's dates. It's got that little dried have you ever smelled like a dried date? On this one, I think it's dates. I, I agree with that. I think it is dates. And almost like, I say almost, you notice what I said? Almost like if you smell the nougat in a Three Musketeers bar. But yeah. I'm just saying almost. Sometimes I pick that up with these kind of beers and people say, he's crazy. He's going mad. All right. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be the caramel, right? So nougat's not yeah. that far away. Caramel and and. Wouldn't you say that like this beer, it it has like, it's deep, but it's not totally deep, right? It's kind of it has an end even on the nose. It has a brilliant, uh, brilliant little thinness to it, you know. So you're getting all this, all this uh, scent, but then it just it's so light. Yep, I agree with that. It's got like a duality to it. Yeah, it's like uh, when I imagine the the bock, the malt in the bock, I imagine it thin, like a wafer, and you could just, it's crisp. I don't know, that's just how I envision it. Um, and it's so well done in this one. Like, it's just, it's just sweetly there, right? It's all just sweetly there, but it's, none of it's loud, right? Like your nougat and, and your, your hop earth that Tanya was noticing, and I mean, it's all just, it's just there. But it's not, it's not any more than that. You have to reach for it a little. Mm -hmm. Hello, uh, Jean. Hi, Jean. Good evening, Good evening guys. How are y'all? Join us late. Now, we're going to go We're, we're gonna go to, because I'm trying to go fast, because Tiny's about to lose, lose her mind wanting to try this. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. But Tiny's got a six-pack, so she can break it open and then break open another one and then break open another one. Now, John, Sharon, oh. Uh, we're going to get to you, Jean. We'll let you catch up with us. We're going to go finish, and then we'll let you catch up. John, Sharon, uh, what do you think about the aroma? You know, I, I agree with a lot of you. It's a well-rounded beer. The aroma on this is just phenomenal. I get a lot of – I get some some light chocolate notes on it, maybe just a smidge of coffee. But, it, you know, I think you can taste it, the big malt presence in it. I think that's what's bringing it out. And the yeast in the back end. I mean, to me, this is a well balanced. To me, that this this is a great double box. I would more or less call it maybe a single box. But uh, overall, I think it's a tremendous beer, and uh, we'll move on to the next one. So Jean Pierre could uh, get on with his and catch okay. up. So Eric and Ryan will give us the aroma, and then Jean Pierre will give us. Well, Jean, you can see what it looks like. You can see that reddish color with that that beige head, huh? Yes, it is, and I'm really, I had one um, earlier today, guys, and uh, I kind of what, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and say what I'm going to say. Uh, go ahead. Coffee, brown sugar, a little molasses, but but the malt presence is really, really takes hold of this beer, and the color is excellent. The head is wonderful. Um, Was that the first time you ever had it? This is my first time having this beer, yes, and I had a bottle earlier this uh, this not the, about to say this morning. <laughs> Woo! Uh, I had a I had a bottle uh, this afternoon of okay. this, and uh, I, I really enjoyed it. And I said, well, I don't want to drink all of it, so let me save a little bit this evening. And then I got caught up with some other stuff. But yeah, when you said now. this morning, I thought me and Maria were rubbing off on you. Now, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Eric and Ryan, Eric and Ryan. 
So, um, other things that I can note that haven't been already said that I do agree with is is when Jay was trying to talk about some of the stuff. Wait, wait a minute, what's all that noise? <laughs> oh, it, 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 John, it, it, John it, Pierre, man, 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 out cellophane, and it sounded like he was shoveling gravel. Okay, go ahead, Eric. Okay, let me try this again. So, like you were trying to say with some of the dark fruit stuff, I'm getting I'm getting the dark cherry notes, probably some raisins and plums and dates, definitely. I'm definitely getting somewhere between, I don't know if it's quite as sugary as molasses, but it's definitely along the lines of brown sugar, I would say. There's a tiny bit of a syrupy sweetness, but I wouldn't say it's anything overboard or, you know, overly sweet. And it just has a good brown bread kind of a multi, you know, sweet flavor. I'm not really getting a whole bunch of hoppy, hoppy notes, but... Wait, 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 wait. You're talking about flavor or the aroma? The, the aroma still. Okay. I'm you... not getting a whole bunch of hoppy notes in in the aroma, but I am kind of getting a spicy, overall spicy, kind of European sazz, maybe hop variety. But overall, yeah. it smells really good, and it definitely has that classic Doppelbach, you know, nose to it, I would say. And yeah. what do you think, Ryan? Uh, I definitely can smell the, la the molasses uh, that John mentioned, um, and dark fruits, like everyone's saying, dark fruits, dates, um, yeah, very good aroma. All right. That's it. Okay. That's fine. And now, now the, the really exciting part that we've been waiting too long is the drinking part. So let's roll. She's like, Tanya, go first, because she's been <laughs> waiting the longest to try it. Uh, cool. Go ahead, Tanya. We'll s switch places now, Tanya. Look at that big glass. All right. Yeah. That was worth the wait, you guys. <laughs> Best lager ever. Well, maybe. I really like um, Bach and Doppelbach because um, even though it's a lager, um, because it has enough of the multi characteristics that really um, get you know get to what it makes me makes me enjoy beer a lot. Um, I really love multi beers. Um, and as you were saying earlier, somebody was saying earlier, it's dark and they wouldn't drink it. And I I feel like when it's dark, I'm like, oh, can I try that? Um, and uh, you know, this just has so much flavor. Um, Lots of deep green flavor, um, nice like bitter finish on it that kind of cleans everything up. Um, nice kind of sparkly carbonation that is that's enjoyable on the tongue and almost makes me and then it makes me want to keep taking another drink with that with that nice carb, sparkly carbonation. Um, I'm actually um, actually like this beer a lot. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and jump to the gun on that one. This is, and I'm two two drinks in. This is a really enjoyable beer, um, and I'm glad I got to try it. You got five more. <laughs> five more. I bought, I bought this good night. Drink with it, so I mean to eat with it. Right. Drink beer, eat the spaghetti. Yeah, and uh, one of the big things from Vera Moretti. Vera Moretti is a big proponent of food pairings. So you noticed on Facebook this past week I put pictures of this beer. And I got this right off the Vera Moretti uh, Facebook page. They were showing it with Italian pizza. They were showing it with, uh, what was that other um, food item? And uh, it all looks so good. Uh, Maria? Um, I... I love how this beer drinks. I think the balance is impeccable. It has just a graceful malt that sports a little bit of light, sweet almond. Um, I, I, I was listening to John, and I, I found a little bit of earth that's that's almost coffee-like. It's a coffee-like impression, isn't that nice? So as it as it warms, it becomes a little bit more complex. What I like about this uh, beer is that. Both the alcohol and the hops come to the finish um, with a little bit of bitterness. 
and, and balance all of that beautiful richness from the malt. Um, you can't really say that you taste alcohol, but it does give a, a subtle warmth and just, just the mildest little ting to the palate as it comes to the finish. And, and I think that the, the dark fruit, like the dried date, is just lovely. I mean, it's, it's softly there, it's gently there, but it's not at the forefront. It just drinks so well. And now I'm starting to smell a little bit of chocolate. So, I mean, it, yowza, this is everything you want in a, in a big beer, in a big lager. It's going gonna, it's gonna to develop in the glass, and it drinks so easily. For 7.2%, it drinks so easily. It, and, yeah, very mild, in my opinion. You know. <clears throat> yeah, okay, now I'm going to give my taste assessment, and then we'll go to John and Sharon, and then uh, Eric and Ryan, and then uh, Jean. Okay, the uh, beer and TV ramble. Okay. Every time I drink this beer, I, I realize why I made so many videos for it. Mm -hmm. uh, man, it's got that strong maltiness, that double malt. You know what I mean? It's like dark bread, like Maria said, the figs, the raisin. I say raisin, too. Uh, the bread crust, a, a good hop. It's got hops. There. They are there. Is this a hoppy beer? No. But the hops are there to balance out that malt. And just like they said, they put in those hops for because they were particularly aromatic. And like Eric saying, it's probably from, you know, the SAS region. But um, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Those European lagers use that so much. But uh, this beer is it's round. I mean, you got to really try to pick out flavors because it's more like something you could just say, "Hey, I'm in Rome. Let's drink a bunch of this." <laughs> you gotta watch out. You're gonna go far uh, you know, right. You better be close to the hotel. But I would say drink. If you're gonna go to Rome and do that, I would recommend drinking the regular beer of Moretti, which is what 4.5 percent. Yes. You probably yeah. run into much less trouble. But uh, this would be a good nightcap after you've done your touring of the day and you're back. <clears throat> Hell yeah. And I think it would go well with some like fish, even like oily fish. But uh. It, <clears throat> uh and the body is not too heavy. It's got body, but it's not too heavy. It's not too syrupy. It's not too thick. The hops are perfectly placed, and it finishes so well. It finishes medium dry, like Maria taught me to say. But it doesn't finish sloppy. It does not finish sloppy. It's so perfectly executed, in my opinion. Now I'm turning the floor over to John in Indiana. Oh, wow. Thank you. You know, I, I agree with a lot of what you guys say. I mean, I think the more this beer warms up, the more complexity and the more it changes. And that's what I like about a beer like this because I mean, you can drink it kind of semi-cold. The more it warms up, the complexity of this beer just it, it changes into a only direction. And, uh, you know, I, I still get a lot of the, the aromatic notes that I said earlier, but but I think the malt presence in this beer after it warms up is just spot on. You don't get the big hop in it, but I can definitely get the yeast and, and the malt flavors in it. But overall, this beer, first time I've ever had it, is uh, phenomenal. And uh, i got to give a shout-out to Robin Smith for getting me two of them. But I wish I'd got a whole six-pack of this. I could share with more people. But this, yeah. this beer is spot on. It, it's what it's about. And... Uh, I think you could put this on a guest tap in a craft beer distillery and everybody go crazy over this. I might go buy a six pack this weekend, honestly. Um, now, Eric and Ryan, what do y'all think six, about it? The six packs in my town were nine ninety nine before tax and I feel like that's a you know, I feel like that's a good price for the kind of a product that you're getting out of out of the uh, La Rasa, which doesn't La Rosa mean the red, I believe, in um, yeah. Italian, and that totally makes sense. I am getting some amber lager or even some uh, some um, re remembrance to the, um, oh my God, to, um, to Killian's Irish red. It's, it, it's, it's much more full-bodied and rich than Killian's red. It's got that same toasty malt character to it that I get from a Killian's. It's definitely a very light 
I would say it's on the very light end of the Doppelbox spectrum. I thought the Salvatore from Paul Honor and even the Spot and Optimator was far richer in the body, and, and certainly Tro Troganator is far richer, and especially the Sam's Double Bop was far richer than this. But this is drinking really nicely. It's 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 got those again those those brown bread and sugar of the molasses and the brown sugar notes to it. I am getting more of the coffee notes in a light um, chocolatey mocha note almost. Um, I am getting those. I'm I'm gonna call them sass hops, or I'm probably wrong. I am getting those spiced hop notes, and there is a little bit of an herbal type quality. I don't know if this one particularly is drinking like a liquid, you know, like a meal in a glass, say like the Optimator might, but it's still doing and performing that job very well. I think if you want to try to get into the Doppel Box and you've never tried a Doppel Box before and you can get your hands on the beer I'm already La Rasa, I think it's a safe one to try. It's a lower ABB. It's a lot lower, in the, you know, uh, it's not as intense in the mouthfeel, and it's really, really easy to drink, so I don't think... You would scare off a ton of people from trying this beer at all. But well, that's my assessment. What do you say, Ryan? Um, on a personal note, I am really enjoying this beer. First beer that I've had since I got back in the city. <coughs> it, um, I don't know. I do. I do feel the dark chocolate uh, taste, and it's yeah, it's good. I, my sister's in Italy, so I just told her check. The she probably knows, but I told her, check out La Rosa. Great. <laughs> she'll, she'll enjoy it. I would think so. And tell her to check out all the other seven or eight Bira Moretti brands that we can't get. Tell us. Yeah. 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 It's really sickening, you know, but I don't want to get into a rant and rave with yeah. Jake. But, I mean, it's like we would drink it, man. Sell it to us, but they won't. Yeah, we would drink. We would drink. I think. As a group here, we would drink more of these top beers yep. if we if if they was available to us. Can't get it. Like okay. I said, only two stores um, uh, across. Uh, Jay, you made the location. <laughs> you told me um, in Fairhope, and I and I didn't want to make the drive across the bay. And the price for that six pack was ten seventy five um, out there. Plus, it was at Pickley Wiggly, which is part of that. Um, uh, pay more for. More. Pay more for more store, you know, the cost plus ten percent. So, um, Piggly Wiggly, Piggly Wiggly, yes, that Piggly Wiggly, yes, that does the cost plus ten percent. They're in that whole group, like like uh, Greers and Food for Less. So, anyway, um, and I got this one at the Cottage Hill Package Cottage Hill Package Store, which is right here in town, less than like ten minutes away, and I paid twelve ninety nine for it for a six pack, but Plus tax, oh well. But what's the price? You know, you, you, price? Might, you might think that's high, but for what you got, uh, this beer, this is, you know, this is a tremendous beer for the price. I think. I think so too. Well, okay. Before, before guess, we get into that, before we get into that, I want Jean to tell us real fast what he thinks about the flavor. The flavor is, uh, I think, all of us would agree. It, to me, as I mentioned, it has a little coffee, some brown sugar, some molasses into it, but it's the malt sort of kind of covers it a little bit, and at 7.2 percent, it's quite mild. You know, like I said, I had one earlier, and this is my second one. I'm probably gonna go for a third after we get in with this examination, and I probably won't feel it. But for a 7.2 percent beer, this is pretty, pretty easy, easy drinking to me. Um, again, um, love the color of the beer. Um, I think what uh, Eric had just said, uh, Thomas Metal, um, yes. that it was kind of some. I think I kind of agree, similar to Spot and Optimator, the same style. And I know Jay. I know in the back of the bottle it says malt liquor, or uh, Spot and um, on 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 the bottle. But um, that's right. That's right. So, in you know, it has some of the same characteristics. But to me, I, I think this is a very well made beer. I made. Uh, I mean, you can't go wrong with this. I mean, bring this to a party, bring this to someone. It, I think it's a gift to someone. This is just very, very well put together. You notice that nowhere on the bottle does it say beer. It mm -hmm. says beer up. Beer is not an English word. No. Nope. I'm sorry, did you just say nowhere on the bottle it says beer? It says 
Doppelbach. Now we're all looking. Yeah. Yeah. Because, right. you know, you can't sell beer in America above 5%. Uh, folks, uh, it, well, I see, well, two things I see. Number one, I see 333 milliliters ale. That's one. And then I. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. It says ale. Ale. Right. Yeah, it does say it says, ale. It says beer right here on mine. She's got the new label. That's oh, you got the new label. Okay, I got the old label. Hold up that label. Okay. Hold up the old label. She's got the new label. Yeah, it says beer. 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 And they're the furthest, you close, they're the furthest you close West Coast bias. <laughs> and, how, and, and how fair is that? Because there, she is the furthest away from Italy, but there she is in our face with the new bottle. I feel hurt. <laughs> I feel played. I feel angry. All right. We also have really good Italian food available here too. Just saying. Yeah, and so we're drinking a ale. We're drinking a <laughs> bottle that says ale, and she's drinking one that says beer. I don't like this at all. Okay. And now. Then and then it says imported by Total Beverage Solutions, Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Correct. Yeah. So. Which, by the way, has a pretty good website, I might add. Now, um, the last question is, <clears throat> would you drink, would you buy this again? I, I'm going to tell you right now, yeah, I would buy it again. I buy this beer so much. I love this beer. I'm, a, I'm, I'm such a fan. And you might say, oh, you just, you just probably work for that company. No, I don't work for yeah. Heineken. I don't know anything about Heineken. You say, well, Heineken gave you four free glasses. You know why the guy from Heineken gave me four free glasses? Because he said he was about to throw them out. Good <laughs> Now, it wasn't because I was special. It was because he didn't know what to do with them. But, so is there, is there a special reasoning or, 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 or an occasion or a time where, where you would pick this beer up over other styles or kinds of beer? Oh, um... I don't know, Eric. I mean, there's sometimes when I would rather drink the regular beer I'm already, you know, the yeah. what is it, 4.5 yeah. percent? Because that beer is so good, I could make a double. I could make a double down. I could make a revisit. I could make an examination. I love that beer, but we're not talking about regular Moretti right now. We're talking about La Rosa. I love this beer. Now, oh. Ray Beer says it's a 61 out of 100. <laughs> really? Oh, oh, Ray, right. Ray, Ray, Ray Beer, I don't Ray know about style, those 61 out of 100? I don't know that they know how to judge the beer based on its style. And I that's why I never look, that's why I never give good weight to Ray Beer or Beer mm -hmm. Advocate. Because yeah. what did they say on BA? They say it's good, it's an 83. I was going to say 85, 88 over on Yeah, I'll do that. That's fair. That's fair. 61. What about on tap? What about on tap? Uh, I'm not a part of that. I think on tap, they got like a 3.36 3. average, I think, out of five. It's about an 85. Yeah. yeah. Great. I, I, give like, I give it like a 4.25 on that tap. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, all right. So, Jay Terrio, <laughs> Louisiana Beer Review said he would buy it again. I'm not going to sit there and just go berserk. All right. Maria, and then Tanya. <laughs> I do buy it often. I buy it over and over. I buy it every now and then. And when and when Doppelbach season comes, when the fall comes, I'll I'll put it in a mix six. You know, um, I don't think I've ever seen an actual six pack. Although they have to have them because I get them at the bottle shop in Singles, so they must have them. Yeah. And uh, Maria, how does this hold up against that California Doppelbach you drank earlier? I like this better. This yeah. one, this one does not finish sweet. This one doesn't have that that all over sweetness. Um, this one has more depth to the malt. This one doesn't have as pronounced a fruit flavor that came right up to a sugary a sugary middle and a sugary finish. This is a this is a much different flavor. Okay, now Tanya. Um. Sorry, we have a lot of stuff going on over here. Um, first of all, I want to say I think that um, I paid eight ninety nine for this six pack, and I think that's the first time that I have paid less than somebody else did, which is great. Second, is, I love that's the idea. That's in California, right? That's yeah. in California. That's pretty good. 
And oh. also, when I drank, um, as I got further down in this, that toasty bread flavor that you were talking about, the crust of the bread, that's totally what I'm getting out of this, and it's amazing. And um, I'm really glad that you guys did a review of this because um, I feel like I'm going to, one, I'm going to drink this again, and two, I'm going to give it to this guy that just walked in um, because he totally needs some of this beer. Um, hello, guy that just walked in. Yeah, hello, guy that just walked in. Hey, pal. <laughs> Um, and uh, so with that, I'm gonna I'm gonna mute myself because I have to give him this beer real quick. So I'll be right back. <laughs> well, well, well. All right, now um, hello, young man. You're muted. Okay, now um, John in Indiana. You know, if it, it, this is definitely this is the first time I've ever had this beer. I really totally enjoyed it. I'm glad we all got to drink it. And this, this is one that I've been on a message post on. I can't wait till tonight. But th this is a phenomenal beer. Would I buy it again? Yes, I would in more than one occasion. Because I think the alcohol in this beer is well hidden. And this is one of those ones that you'd want to enjoy with your friends. And this is one that you want to uh, say, you know, hey, check this out. What do you guys think? And yeah, I'm I may buy it again. Okay. So we got everybody so far would buy it again now. Um, but you're not obligated to agree with us, that's for sure. Yeah. Now Eric and then uh, Ryan. So yesterday when I posted this on Untapped and I and I linked the Untapped to uh, Facebook, I was sort of torn at the time. Yeah, yeah. Last night, if, if I would buy this beer again, because I really, really, really. Am liking this beer a lot, but I just don't know if this is something that I would. I, I don't know if I would buy this particular beer itself again just to have a beer. Although I have no problems with the beer, the quality of the beer, or what you get out of it for its ABV, for how easy it is to drink, for it being 9.99 a six pack of a really good quality solid beer that could most likely go to toe to toe with a lot of other beers. Although I don't, I I, I think that. As far as craft beer is concerned, I think the Troganator and definitely the Sam Adams Double Bock is far superior to this beer. But there's nothing wrong with that. If you want to really you're wrong, nice, yes, beer up already. Yeah. <laughs> if you want a really nice and flavorful um, version of a Doppelbock that's really easy and accessible to drink, and you just want to have a good alcohol percentage and have a really good solid product to back it up, this is one to try. So. If you're looking for those parameters, which sometimes I am, then I would totally go towards this beer every now and then. Not all the time, though. Okay. Now, and Ryan? Ryan? Uh, usually, uh, when I go to the store to get beer, I really am, uh, don't know what I'm looking for. So I'm always looking at beers that I've either sat in on reviews with or... Um, beers that have been brought up uh, somewhere else uh, and this beer has made a good impression on me so I think I would buy it again and if I was in Italy I would definitely try try the other kinds now, uh, uh, um, do you recommend that somebody um, try it I did I actually just sent my sister a yeah. message uh, but her her husband knows uh, he knows the beer world, so he's probably he's probably having one of these when he before he goes to sleep or when they're all in Italy right Italy. now. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. Now Jean Pierre. Uh, yeah. Um, it it without a doubt, without a doubt, I'm gonna buy. I will buy this again if if if. You know, as Maria was saying, uh, maybe be perfect for, you know, the winter or, I mean, going into the fall season, Thanksgiving. This would be a beer I'll probably get just for myself to have because I know I'll probably be the only guy drinking it. Because if I offer it to somebody like, Ew, what's this? You know, so. Yeah. I, think um, this be a, I think this would be a perfect beer with a pot roast from the oven. Oh, exactly. Good point. Now, yeah. now, are we done here with all this examination? I, I, I want to come back on Eric for a minute. Yeah, but wait, real, real quick, yeah, real quick, John Sherry. Uh, what I mean, did I say that, that made you say something? Before, before we have rant and rave with John, <laughs> uh, uh, Jean-Pierre, yeah. Beer and TV Ramble, yeah. I was fiddling with this because I'm smelling that menthol right now. <laughs> I'm about to... 
Yeah, when I get done. It's been that kind of day today, guys. I got, so, off, track. You know, I got off track a little bit, Yuri. But anyway, Yuri, I got off track a little bit, Yuri. But anyway, um, uh, yeah. now it's time. Before you start your rant and rave with Zone 1, I have even more shocking news. Mm-hmm. Maria, sit back. Okay. Because I'm about to crack open something I've never drank before, and here it is. Woohoo! Genesee oh, Brew House. Oh yeah. Now, now I'm gonna I'm gonna come back on Mr. Eric for just a second because I, I heard you say that Sawmill Double Bock was better. But yes, I, I did say that. And and I think you got to compare the two beers for what they are because exactly. Sam Adams is is made locally in the United States, where this is made overseas. Yep. And to me, this here trumples Sam Adams Dock Block by far. I'm sorry. I'm just saying. Well, that. well, the thing that's the, the thing that I that I enjoy more about the uh, the beer already than that uh, than the Sam Adams one. This is this is far more of a refreshing and far easier to drink than that one. If you don't really want, I, I think the Sam Adams Doppelbach is even more of a traditional Doppelbach, where it's like a meal in a glass versus this one. Okay. Uh, I found that the Sam. I, I don't think I've ever had Samuel Adams Doppelbach. I think I had their Imperial Doppelbach, okay. which was like I think it's, I think it's called Doppelbach. Is what yeah, it's called. called Doppelbach. That stuff was like chewing on a beer. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it is more of a robust drinking experience than this one for sure. But yeah. I think this is this is more of a traditional style. Yeah. From from, from the yeah, it could be America uh, being American with that region where the where where the Double box and the box come from. This is more of a traditional style. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Um, or or Sam Adams, it's more uh, of a craft type beer. Where this is more of a traditional type beer. I would agree. I'll bring up two points. First point: Do you think it's a sin to enjoy a beer that's from Heineken? No. 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 It's no sin at all. I mean, who cares where it's made? I mean, if they make good beer, I mean, it's. I mean, just like that old Tanker Dale. I mean, you were raving about it the other day, Jay. So, and made by Paps, you know, a, a brewery. Yeah, but you it's know, the of Paps Blue Ribbon. But it's, it's an macro. excellent. According to you, it was an excellent beer. So, who it cares? Was wonderful. It was wonderful. But it's a macro. Drink, drink the beer you like. Oh, okay. Exactly. Um. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, let's go back on the old Tanker Dale for a minute. Because oh, wait, 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 wait. Before you bring that up, before you bring that up, before I forget, uh, Jean asked me, did I get this in New Orleans? Well, no, we don't get Genesee in New Orleans, but someone brought me a huge tub of beer. You might have saw what I posted on Facebook. Like 40 asked, beers, right? Huh? Like 40 beers, right? I mean, I, 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 mean, I was in shock. I was like, what, what's going on around here? I brought the guy one beer from Okinawa. I'm like, I'll be nice and bring him a beer from Okinawa, and he admitted he could he, He'd never seen the beer. Most people can't get the darn thing. So I thought he was going to bring me a beer, a couple of beers, you know. So he, he opens up his trunk, and I'm like, wow, you bringing beer to everybody, huh? I mean, because I know he's traveling around the country. Oh, no, that's just what we, we bought for you. I'm like, oh, Lord. It was just like Christmas in July. It was fun. <laughs> It was so embarrassing. I felt so ashamed. But one of the beers he had was this Genesee Scotch Ale, and it is so good. Maria, I am going to do a video because I got more than one. Um, oh. Maria, have you had the Scotch Ale? I haven't. Mm. But, uh, Jay, do you still get the uh, the cream ale and the Jenny Light in your area? Oh, no, because they put it on the shelf for $4.69, a six-pack for Genesee Light. And the stubby bottles, and I bet you I was the only person buying it. It was a whole, the whole thing was terrible. They didn't promote it. It made me so angry. That's that's what's so sad, particularly with these stores. You know, once you get something, you know, promote it, push it out oh, there. No, you know? no. Who ever heard of promoting something? Now, John yeah. Sharon. Oh no, John oh, Sharon's. Wait a minute, wait a minute. No, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Uh-huh. Yes. He's about to go off on Paps Old Tankerdale, which I am going berserk over. I have a fridge full of it. Okay. No, I'm not going off on it. Send me a bottle. You call it a macro. Oh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not you know, I'm not calling it a macro. I'm calling it a pre prohibition beer. I've got a refrigerator full of it too because I bought a bunch more of them. 
but the thing about it is, though, I mean, that's a beer from the past. It's not made the same way, but with the same ingredients. But, I mean, I don't think it's fair to call it a macro beer. I know. I was just kind of being uh, provocative. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I had to come back and give you a little crap over it. So. I was right. I was lighting some fires, but um, yeah, because Old Tankerdale is brewed by Cold Stream Brewing, Cold yeah. Springs Brewing of uh, Minnesota. It's a craft beer company, and Paps contracted with them to make that beer. Um, well, anyway, we went on and on. Um, I'm gonna do a video for Genesee Brew House Scotch Ale, and Maria and I actually visited the brew house, and not only did we visit the brew house, but we had a long and pretty detailed conversation with the brewmaster, did we not? Yeah, I love him. Dean Jones, what a sweet man. I, I haven't met too many brewmasters, and so I, I think he's my only one that I can say I really have actually met and talked to, and what a nice fellow. And he Plus he knows his stuff. What a tremendous brewer. Right. I, and I'm a fan, I admit it. I was always a fan of Genesee, right? I like the cream ale, I like the lager, and then you know, uh, behind my back, they came out with the craft line, right, with the, the black IPA, um, the IPA. I forget what else they put out first, and I didn't buy any of it. And then I forget um, what I saw, and I said, let me pick this up. I was so impressed. They just made my favorite new German-style Pilsner of the year, and they're coming out with an alt beer. Dean Jones is going to make us all a nice alt beer for the fall. Okay, well, good night, Eric and Ryan. Thanks for joining us. See y'all next week. Good night. I'm Thank sorry. Guys. Too long. What What are we doing next week? No, that's okay, Maria. And but and the thing I love talking to this guy, Dean. He was brewing a beer. And he was drinking it. He, he he let us drink some of it. Okay. So he tells me and Maria. I hate this stuff. It's terrible. He says, but I gotta brew it because they say we have to make beers like this. But he's like, I can't stand these kind of unfinished beers. And then, you know, Maria, we're not going to say too much. But he was going off and off. He was, like, doing a rant and rave about um, a particular beer style. And we were fascinated by what he was saying. But he was right. But it was you can, get a, you can get a terrific sense of him. If you go to my Facebook page, and I'm not really sure what the dates are, but I took a couple of really nice photos that show you his personality. First of all, he just, he's like a, he's a chubby fellow, he has a red face and white hair, and he smiles brightly, he's very genuine, and I remember what he said, he said, I get dinged because my beer's too clean, people don't like my mouthfeel, it's too clean, and I laugh, and that's when he gave us the beer right out of the bright tank, he had one of the IPAs that he was making, he says, isn't that bitter, you know, that's, that's kind of bitter, don't you think? He's just terrific. What a terrific fellow. He's funny. He doesn't even have to try. He tells me, he tells me, you'd never make it as a brewer. Yeah, he looks at Jay and goes, you, you're not a brewer. You're too skinny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that's his, when he, when he did his video for the Pilsner, he said, never trust a skinny brewmaster. Yeah. <laughs> so he says to Jay, you can't be a brewmaster. You're too skinny. Yeah, and what, me, what Marie and I noticed was that a big part of those guys' job down in that um, brew room was that they were drinking the beer the entire time they were brewing it. So I don't know what kind of job environment you like, but a big part of their job was drinking beer constantly all day long. So, you, don't look, you don't look hipster enough, Jay, to be a brewer. No, I don't have a goatee anymore, and I'm not wearing a bandana. Hey, and but, neither uh, is he, right? He's he's not the stovepipe, you know, the stovepipe jeans and the and the long beard either. Smoking he's jacket, totally you know, the nice smoking jacket. Yeah. No, he's just a regular old guy. Oh, now next, okay, coming up, coming up, coming up, because we're going on long tonight. But we, you know, obviously I was being like a devil's advocate when I brought up the macro thing. But look, this beer of Moretti La Rosa proves that big companies like Heineken can nail it, in my opinion. And this, right. this beer can go toe to toe with a whole lot of craft beers. And I'm not in I'm not involved in that craft versus macro war. That I is not, you don't want to be involved in it. But you know, I watched the 
I'm not in the war, but I watch the war every day. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> I see the war every day, and I don't care. Um, next week, oh boy, would you say I got you as my phone? Uh, next week we've got another macro slash micro company because they're kind of like macro now. Sierra Nevada Summerfest. I saw that um, at uh, Publix. Reasonable. I think I can get a bottle. I'm good. In two weeks. Get ready for awesomeness. Because we're looking at Cezanne Dupont from Belgium. Woo! I've had that numerous times. So better get so ready. And then in three weeks. Okay, if you want to puke on air, go ahead. But we're looking at Michelob Lime Cactus. Um, awesome. Michelob, oh, Michelob Lime Cactus? Yeah, Michelob Ultra Lime Cactus. Didn't you ever want to drink an ultra light beer that was flavored with lime and cactus? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> no. Sorry. And, uh, <laughs> no. Right. But it, it exists, actually. Um, and people buy this product. And then on August 10th, we're looking at Old Tankerdale from Paps. And after that, I don't know, because I never did anything else on the schedule. So that's where we stop. Maybe we can all look at something between then and now. Oh, yeah. Got a lot of good ideas coming yeah. around. So thank you, Jean, for making it. I know you love doing these Wednesday nights. Thank you. Yeah, it's good for me, so. Huh? Wednesday night's the best for me, so. Yeah, me too. And Maria, thank you. And Tanya, thank you. And Eric and Ryan. And uh, this uh, Scotch Ale, I'll be curious to uh, look at it again and do a review. Oh, and then today, you know, it arrived at Mathern's. I happened to be you in mean. No. Okay. It's coming. I happened to be in Mathern's today. And the Biarito arrived. Biarito from Oscar Blues. Biarito. What is oh. that? Interesting. So it's what a, is it? It's a craft beer's take on Mexican lager. I've had that. That's good. I'm gonna oh, like El Sully? So it's a Vienna lager like El Sully, like 21st Amendment did? Uh, I don't know. It's just no, uh, it's nothing like that, Maria. It's like Dos yeah. Equis. Yeah. Oh, it's like oh, it's uh, like an adjunct lager. Okay. Yeah. So that'll be interesting when I get a single because I'm not buying a four pack. Um, a lot I, of the brewers have made have made you know and and you know have I given a little bit of Good night, John. Good night, Good night John. Good night, John. Good night. Good night. Um, and made some good, you know, versions of what they were thinking is their their idea of a better macro lager, right? Like El, uh, El Sully with 21st Amendment. They're like, well, this would be a good one. We'll make one. You know, maybe that's what Oscar Blues did. They said, well, let's we'll just make one. Let's see if y'all like it. And Southern Tier did it with the one buffalo. I mean, it was just, you know, it's something that they're all trying to do. I know, and it's sad, though, in a way, because... Um You've got the Michelob original lager that Jean Pierre, you know what I'm talking about. That's yeah. made with uh, all these expensive ingredients. It's all malt. It's been around since 1896. Yeah, very, I thought the lager was really good to me. No one buys it. It can't That's give it away. Right. It can't give it away. It's sickening, you know, because it's like you're gonna drink Michelob original and tell me it's bad. Are you serious for real? Are, what are you talking about? You agree with that, Jean? I, I, you know, and then they'll say, well, try this Michel, you know, and then, uh, and then Michel Ultra. Yeah, I'll try that, you know, and that's really. Yeah, because it tastes just like water. I'm curious. You know how in the beer world they do a lot of blind taste tests? Yeah. I feel like blind taste tests for beers would be a very interesting examination of your friends. <laughs> you know. That's true. I've done it. I've done it. What they really like, in terms of what they really like, you know. Right. Stay, stay in the same style. I mean, so if you're going to do loggers for the night, say that you're doing loggers or, you know, or, you know, I don't know. Just so that way they're at least comparable apples and oranges wise. But 
that would be an interesting thing because I got to tell you, I've done I've done um, wine, blind wine tasting tests with people with a wine out of Nebraska, which just by saying wine out of Nebraska has a bad rap, and um, with people who are are some pretty um, mature wine drinkers, and and it scored really well by not knowing what it was. But if I were to read that, I'd be like, <laughs> I don't know about that. You're so, right. You're a hundred percent right. Blind taste testing is very important because it takes away that bias. You see? Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of bias. It's and it can really show you that you don't ever know as much as you think. I would love to do a blind taste test. Just throw throw anything you want at me. I would love to see how I how I really fare. And someone just um, did one on Beer Advocate, and and you can do it with mason. Excuse me, mason jars. Um, you just you just label the mason jars on the bottom, and then they all look alike. You shuffle them up, and there you go. Blind taste test. Right, right. And look, yeah. let's use this as an example, and then we'll get off the air because it's, we've been on long enough. Like last month when you and I were in uh, um, Utica at FX Max, which, by the way, was an awesome tour, you pay five bucks, but they don't just run you through like, oh, they spend two hours, and they so are like very that price, five dollars to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And listen to this. They spend two hours going in extreme detail. Not only that, they give you two beers at the end of the tour, and it's not two little tasting glasses. It's big, huge bar pint glasses, or you can get the craft beers that are in the smaller. But then they let you win trivia contests during the tour, which we got three extra beers out of that. But but the point I'm trying to make, Marie and I were drinking this Utica Club and Utica Club Light, which was super fresh out the can. You could put those two beers in a blind taste test, and I think people would say, oh, they're so good. They're so good. But if you told them it was Utica Club, they'd say, ah, I knew something was wrong with it. Hmm. Yeah, same with any of the other beers. Same with any of the other macros. Like it, that would be a good blind taste test, right? To just line up in any in any light lager style or premium lager. You know, put the put the light lagers against the premium lager. Throw a spot in there. You know, throw in throw in one that you know we've all said is really sweet. And let's see if someone else thinks it's sweet. You know, if they don't know which one it is, it's just great fun. I would love to do one. Yeah. I wish you guys lived closer, cause I'm like, let's do this right now. Like I've got, I've got a ton of beer in my refrigerator. Let's mm. do this. I know it'd be so fun. Well, you know, we could actually do that. Like I said, that we ran out of um, beers to look at in August. We could actually, this is just, you know, like brainstorming. We could actually do one of these taste challenges on air, where we pick three major beers and like throw in a, like a more well-regarded one and then yeah. we, could, we could set it up blind and we could drink it on air and see you know it would just be interesting we could all like we'd have to talk about this off air but we could do it in a way that it's coded like you could take some tape and put it below A, B, C, D and then you could mix them and start tasting them and I, I think when you do that you can run across some fascinating um, surprises you could surprise yourself like you'd be appalled like I watched this um, she doesn't really interact with people but she's got her own channel and she did a video where they took all these like 24 beers and they made a contest and they narrowed it down to the final and mm -hmm. they went through all these beers and they she made two parts it was long and they they went through this process of elimination and they were totally stunned by the beer that they picked to be the best and they threw craft beers in there against macros but it was all blinds, and it, they did not know what they were drinking, and they were absolutely shocked with the beer that they picked as number one. And the girl was even like, I'm embarrassed. I'm like ashamed. I don't think I'm a good beer taster now. And it was so funny, you know, because of the beer that they picked to be the number one beer in the contest. But it, it proved the point that you don't know if, you, if, you're, if you're drinking it blind, you might shock yourself, you know. Right. So that's no lagers, well, Bira Moretti and La, La Rasa and Hawk Brown. 
Oh, well, Tanya, off route is I a... do have a PBR in my refrigerator, actually, because I Woo! found... Woo! All right. <laughs> I found a single can, and I was like, I can drink a single can. Look what I got, you guys. We like PBR now. <gasps> no. I got... Barrel aged. Barrel aged. Grand Reserve Barrel Aged. Ooh. How nice. Look at yeah, that. I, as as I like to call it, jealous. Damn. Yeah, I am super excited about this. So, notice it's in the fridge. I bought two so I can I can try to sell her one, but I'm not very good at cellaring. I'm I'm very good at drinking. Yeah. Well, we do. We do. <laughs> Well, you guys, I'm going to have to go, too. Thank you so much. Okay, all thank right. you. We're all getting off of this now. All right, yeah. thanks, folks, for watching this extended video, but we were just, like, so fascinated by it. We couldn't stop talking about it. All right, thank yeah. you. Have a good night. Take good care. Good night, everybody. Excellent yeah, everybody. Good night.